Okay guys, this is the first, maybe only video, we'll see how quickly we can get through it, of 8.7, which is systems of inequalities. Um, for this one, all we worry about is graphing, because that's really the only method that can give you a nice, easy answer. You're going to have an entire region um, on your graph, and so we want to be able to see that. So what are we going to do here? Um, sometimes you're just going to have two inequalities. That's the smallest system you can have, but you could have three, four, five, however many. Doesn't matter how many you have, um, it's all about just remembering how to graph a single linear inequality. And also, if you get into four, five, six of them, whatever, you want to not clutter up your graph. So what you're going to do, you're going to graph each line, determine if it's a solid line or a dashed line, depending on what your symbol is, if it's just greater than or if it's greater than or equal to, that determines if it's solid or dashed. You determine which side to shade on, which is going to be where it's true. And then where the find that we're going to find the final shaded region where all of our shaded regions intersect. A little piece of advice on the bottom here, colored pencils can be helpful. Um, if you graph one of them in yellow and one of them in blue, then where they intersect makes green. Yay! So it kind of helps you keeping your graph from getting a, too cluttered up if you, if you struggle with the final shading. So let's just jump into a couple of examples. What we're going to do here is I'm going to work out this first example on the whiteboard. And then the other ones I already have worked out. Once we've worked one out together, we can probably just kind of look at the other ones. So here's what I got for you so far with this example. First thing we're going to have to do sometimes is we're going to have to get our inequalities into slope intercept form so they're easier to graph. So I've done that for you already because I don't feel like we need to go over that. We should already know how to do that. Subtract 3x divided by 2. My second one, subtract x and divide by negative 5 and now we're ready to graph them so this is the key part here graphing the system of inequalities so the red one we're going to start at 3 right it's going to go down 3 and over 2 like this down 3 and over 2 like this or up 3 and back 2 whatever the case may be this line because we have just greater than and not greater than or equal to is going to be a dotted line, dashed. So we dash it right on through our little coordinate grid like this. And then we have to determine which side of this line do we want to shade on, which side is true. There's all kinds of little shortcuts along the way, but the one foolproof method for determining that is to plug in a point. Because every point on one side of the line will be true, it'll work when you plug it in. Every point on the other side of the line will be false. It won't work when you plug it in. So we just plug a point in. If it's available, 0, 0 is the easiest point to plug in. So let's check that one. If I plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, I want to know is 0 bigger than 0 plus 3. So is 0 bigger than 3? No, it's not. 0 is not bigger than 3. So I do not want to shade over there where 0, 0 is. I'm going to shade the opposite side of the line. Okay? And there's my first one. Basic graphing a linear inequality 101, right? The second one, we start at negative 2 down here. And I have a slope of 1 fifth, so I go up 1 and over 5. Okay, up 1 and over 5, so we're going to hit down here. Come around here. This line, because it has the or equal to, is going to be a solid line because it includes the line. The line is included as part of my answer. Okay, my line's not too straight, but you get the idea there. Once again, once I get my line graphed, I determine this one's solid because it has the or equal to versus dashed because that one does not. We then have to determine which say, um, side of the line we want to shade on because one side will be true, one side won't be. Once again, pick a point. Zero, zero is available, so let's check it. Is zero bigger than zero minus two? In other words, is zero bigger than negative two? Yes, it is. So we're going to shade the side of the line where 0, 0 is, okay? There we go. Now that we've got our two lines, because we only had two of them this, um, in this case, both graphed, um, we now go back and we're going to super shade um, where the two regions overlap. If you guys remember way, way, way back when, um, before your time, there was a Saturday Night Live skit where, uh, superstar, um, anyway, so we're going to super shade. Um, our final region where the two overlap and so we can kind of see that that's going to be up in here where the red shading and the green shading overlap and so um, without using my entire marker you get the idea it's going to be this area up here okay 
And so there's my answer for the first example. Yay! Hopefully that made sense and rang a bell from something you did way back in earlier algebra classes. Um, because it should, right? <laughs> if not, well then, pause the video and then go back over it again, right? Actually, it's not a bad idea to pause the video because what we're going to do next, I've already got the next couple of examples worked out for you. So here's example two, and here's example three. I already have them worked out, so it's not a bad idea to pause the video right now and then go back and look at the answers. So you can try them on your own, if you will. When you unpause the video, you can see that they're already done here. Example two, I only had one of them that needed to be put into slope intercept form, so I did that. Graph that one in purple. It's a dashed line because it doesn't have O equal two. Starts at two and goes down four and over one, so there it is right there. And then the other two in this case are just re restricting me into the first quadrant. X greater than or equal to zero means I'm over here. It's red, and then Y greater than or equal to zero is above the x-axis, so it's in orange. And so then the final shaded region you can see is that little triangular region right there in the middle where all three of them overlap. Okay? Again, if you want to pause the video and try example three, you can. Here is example three. The good news with example three is these two were already in silver and self form, so I didn't have any of that work to do. So I graphed the first one in blue, starting at three, going up two and over three. There's the blue line. It's solid because it has or equal to, so it includes the line. And it is below it that I shade because that is where it's true. Zero, zero is true. Zero is indeed less than three. My second line is orange. Okay. I start at negative four, go up two and over one, up two and over one, up two and over one, and so forth. That line is dotted or dashed because um, it is not included um, in the region because it doesn't have or equal to in it. And then again, zero, zero is true because zero is bigger than negative four, so I'm shading towards zero, zero. Um, then we have our two horizontal lines. This time it's y is greater than or equal to two and x is greater than two. So y is greater than or equal to two is a solid green line shaded above. X is just greater than two is a dotted, the red line, shaded to the right. So we have four regions here, and you can kind of see where they all overlap to the right and above of the orange, to the right and below of the blue, to the right of the red and above the green is that little black super shaded quadrilateral area down in here. Okay? I think we're going to pause it here. We are going to need to because we're already almost up to eight minutes and we've got uh, a couple more examples and one of them's a word problem. So there'll be a second video after all. We'll see you on that one.